happy Tuesday. Practice 10, you blink your eyes and you're two thirds of the way through. <laughs> I wish we had another 10 to be honest with you, but uh, good quality work today. Worked uh, some blitz situations as well as some two minute segments. Had a good team run period. I thought Vi really looked healthy and is getting back and got some really quality work today. Uh, it was good to see him uh, in a couple situations uh, being set up to catch the ball out of the backfield and did a really nice job there. So a good day uh, overall, I thought, uh, in the team blitz. Um, it was neat to have Porter back and to see him healthy. Uh, he is basically unblockable. Uh, and just when he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation, he's getting to that point you have to slide to him all the time uh, to be able to get him picked up. Uh, but a really good day. Uh, we had one uh, minor injury uh, with Jordan Iosefa with a, with a knee, a twisted up knee. Doesn't look severe, uh, but uh, we'll see where that's at. We pulled Chuma for a, a lower back and uh, Everything else is just bumps and bruises. So with that, I'll answer any questions that you have. What did you see when you went back over the tape from Saturday? Um, I, you know, I, I saw the quarterbacks basically getting their eyes to the right spot, uh, but just needed letting the ball go just a little bit quicker, um, being a little bit more anticipatory there. Right now, as young quarterbacks, usually you like to see things open, um, and they're really trying to learn to throw to open windows. And that takes time and it takes reps. Um, you know, I, I saw a couple things today that I was really pleased with, especially in our team run that I thought they fixed um, from a couple mistakes that they made. So it's good to be able to learn from, from a mistake from Saturday, try to repeat it out here today and to get it fixed. So it was nice to see that. Um, everything else, I think defensively, uh, not only are they are we really good, they're, they're deep too. It was neat to see both, both a first and second squad go out there, communicate extremely well, no missed assignments, uh, maybe in the entire scrimmage. Um, so it's good to have that experience and that depth right now on defense. What has to happen to get, get some deep balls completed? Um, but just we've got to hook up better. I, I think that um, uh, right now, I think Pitt and Tyler, uh, Tyler are doing a real nice job. I'll tell you the other guy, too, that is getting open for us is Velas Jones. Um, is having a really, really good camp right now and has shown that speed. Um, the light is on for him right now, but uh, we've got to get our deep ball accuracy a little bit better uh, quarterback position. And, and again, I think that just comes with rep after rep after rep after rep. Brian mentioned at this point in spring that uh, quarterbacks can maybe hit a wall, maybe as they would in a freshman season or whatnot. Do you, do you sense that from them as all, at all? Oh, no question. You get to practice nine or ten in training camp and you've got an entire playbook in, um, you, you know, you will hit the wall. Remember, game plans are so shrunken down um, that, it, that it makes it a whole lot easier. I thought T did a nice job today of, of going back. Now we'll just repeat. There's no new install from here on out. Now they're going to be able to have these basically last six practices. Uh, to be able to just rehash what they've already learned. And hopefully we see corrections made and we see better results. You mentioned I think it was last week that you wanted to see development from the receivers behind Tyler and Mike mm -hmm. Chipman. Mm -hmm. is, is, you mentioned Bayless, but mm -hmm. is he kind of the guy who's shown? Yeah, I, I, I really think that Bayless has taken a step forward. You know, he's one of those guys that has always had great speed, but is learning how to become a, a really good route runner too. I've seen him matched up on some really good DBs out here and had the ability to get by them, but also run his intermediate routes better than I've seen him uh, in, in his first couple of years. So uh, T's done a really good job with him. I think he's going to be in a position to help us next year, no question. What have you seen, I know it's still early, what have you seen Tim bring to the staff to, to, to practice every day? Um, just, I, I tell you what's really neat about about Drev, and it comes, I think, a lot from being a coordinator and having to look at all positions, and he's been that coordinator before. But to be able to take the mentality to go from an O-line coach to a running back coach, he's done both. He's been a running back coach, tight end coach, O-line coach, and to be able to have that personality that can transition from hard-nosed O-line coach to a guy that is now coaching skilled athletes, that's a rare breed, you know, to be able to know exactly what pulls the trigger on a certain kid. Um, obviously, he brings tremendous run game knowledge in. Uh, I've already seen that uh, in our meetings. Um, he's going to do a terrific job in run, helping with the run game plans as well as pass protection. Um, he's allowing our running backs 
that could kind of get a full scope understanding uh, what the offensive line is doing and why they're doing it. And even said to, said said to me the other day, Coach, I'm grasping so much more. Uh, I'm understanding. I'm seeing the total picture rather than just my one specific read. I'm understanding why those things are going on. So that's uh, that's what Tim is. He's a big picture guy, uh, and he teaches him everything. So I'm very glad he's here. Is there any possibility that with Tim that there may be some uh, adjustments in the running game scheme in terms of? Uh, you've game? already seen some out here. Uh, you've seen a little bit of uh, more of under center. You saw today a little bit more under center. Um, you saw in our short yardage goal line. Um, you saw some of those things that uh, Tim's been used to, as well as as well as T. Uh, some some heavy packages, 22 personnel packages. I thought that was probably the the best positive of the day offensively. Saturday was being in those third and one to three situations, as well as goal line situations, and and being extremely efficient um, in converting. So um, that was good to see. How do you feel about the competition at left tackle? Um, I, I think right now with Austin Jackson and, and Clayton Johnson, I think both are doing very well. Um, you know, it's going to be one of those, I think, that's going to go through fall, Adam. Um, I, I have been extremely impressed by both. I think Austin is really coming on. I, I watched him in the one-on-one -on -one pass pro today, um, picking up some twist games that he wasn't quite quite accustomed to as a true freshman and now he's kind of handling them with ease you know so that's it's been great to see his experience from last fall transfer over to the spring so we got two good tackles there with Clayton and Austin we'll see how it shakes out yeah, it's you, good you moved Clayton around before yeah. what, do you, what do you like about him what did you bring to the table um, great athleticism and the and and the availability to go uh, right or left. He's played both. He's very comfortable at both. Some guys get stuck at one, and, and it's some guys are right-hand dominant, right-foot dominant, left-hand dominant, left-foot dominant. Clayton has a knack to be able to do both, which raises his stock uh, to be able to get more snaps. And he got a lot of great experience last year, played well for us. He's one of the reasons he helped us uh, win a Pac-12 title, that, that ability to kind of be that special six man that can go in and get half the snaps was valuable. Do you think the quarterbacks feel more comfortable airing the ball out, knowing that the quarterback competition won't be done until the fall? Oh, no question. I, I mean, right right now, like I said, going into it, this is obviously we're always evaluating, but this is more education. I mean, we've got 15 practices. We're on practice 10 to try to see how much improvement we can go from practice one to practice 15. We are nowhere near where we need to be right now. Um, we've got, uh, you know, 25 practices in the fall, five more here, 30 total, and we've got a lot of good work uh, that's got to get done. Uh, but um, right now I told them, don't put the stress on yourself about, oh, I missed this throw. What does that mean for me? Let's just try to get better as a unit, get better as a core, and, and compete with each other. You know, compete with each other. But let's get better together also. There was a, a video of you with Kobe Bryant yesterday. What yeah. was that about? Oh, we had only at USC um, through our uh, through our business business school. Dave Velasco and the entrepreneurial system uh, school brought. Um, Kobe out to kind of go through the sports performance of the mindset, our sports performance institute over there, to kind of see his competitive mindset and what he's about. So it was an hour long presentation. Um, it was unbelievable to see him in that real element, just be himself. And I knew he was one of the fiercest competitors in all of sports. Now I know, <laughs> without a fact. Uh, he, he was able to talk to our students. I thought it was enlightening. I got a lot out of it, to be honest with you. Uh, got I had the opportunity to present him our, uh, an honorary 24 football jersey um, from the Trojans, and uh, it was just great having him on campus. He did he did a lot for those kids. It was really neat. Was that your first time meeting him? I, no, I had the opportunity to meet him before at one of our basketball games. He had come out with his family and got to hang out with him a little bit. Such a gentleman, such a guy that just is real, and uh, he, you know he's he's. Uh, He's a guy that you know went out of his way yesterday to shake every hand and have a conversation with every person. I was blown away uh, to be Kobe Bryant, to be that humble with that humility. It was, it was really cool to see. Was Godfrey okay with you giving him 24? Say it one more time. Was Godfrey okay with you giving him number 24? Uh, Godfrey would be 22, but Isaiah Langley. <laughs> Isaiah Langley came up to me and uh, today said, Coach, did you give my jersey a number away? I said, it's okay to have two greats at 24, too. So he's, uh, he was, he, we laughed about it, but, uh, but he said, but he gets to stay at 24, too.
Kobe can be on offense at 24 if he wants to come play one. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, guys, Thanks take so care. Much.